Hey, good morning, Facebook fans and friends. I am excited to give you an awesome word that I got this morning as I was reading the scriptures on how to handle your critics. And if you get to a place of leadership in life, then you're setting yourself up for a place of criticism. It's just uh, they're, they're hand in hand. You know, once you get to a place in which you're uh, name is there in front of others or you're put in a position in front of others, criticism is bound to come. It's only a matter of time. And this morning I was reading in the Old Testament and David was going about his business. He was doing what God had called him to do in being a king. And he had gotten that position rightfully. He could have tried to steal the position of being a king, but he didn't. He allowed the Lord to give him that position in its proper time instead of stealing it from Saul. Yet he had critics, and one of the critics was Saul's relative, who was basically cursing him, the Bible says. He was cursing David. He was cursing Adam and telling him that, hey, you got this position unrightfully, and you stole the position from Saul. And as David was walking along with his men, this guy was dropping F-bombs on him. I mean, he was cursing him out, and he was telling him what he thought about it. And what's interesting is that David's men, their thoughts on what David should do, they said, kill him, take his head off. So they wanted to retaliate. And our, our natural response when we get criticism is to do what? Is to respond to defend ourselves, number one. And number two, it's to criticize back and to retaliate and to not, it's not even eye for an eye. It's like they were saying, hey, he's taking out your eye, take off his head. So the natural response is always to get back, always to say back, always to defend yourself, always to represent yourself when people criticize you, when they curse you, when they say bad things about you. And let me just say again, if and when you're in a place of leadership, criticism comes. It's just natural. It's part of the gig. So how do you respond? David did something amazing that I want you to catch today. I'm going to read it to you here. He said to his followers who wanted to take this guy's head off, he said, leave him alone and let him curse for the Lord has told him to do it. Now, I don't really know if he meant that the Lord was telling this guy to curse him. I think what we're hearing there is David is understanding the sovereignty of God. He's saying that this guy has been allowed to curse me. God, let him do it. Now, here, here's where the key comes in. And perhaps the Lord will see that I am being wronged and will bless me because of these curses. <laughs> David trusted God so much that he even trusted God with his critics. David realized that God is bigger than his critics. And that's what you have to realize, that your critics are small in comparison to the size of your God. Let me repeat, your critics are small in, in comparison to the size of your God. Here's the thing, when people criticize you, when they drop curses on you, when they say things about you that hurt, they actually do hurt. Why do they do that? For, for number one, their character is small. But number two, what's the motive? It's to take you out. And they may not be able to remove you from your place of position or leadership, but what do they wanna do? They're trying to get in your head. And what David said was, look, I'm not taking him out. Look, maybe maybe this guy's got a point. Maybe God's allowing it for some reason. Maybe there's something to it. I'm going to just let him keep talking. And here's the, here's the thing. It's three words. This is what David did with his men. Just keep walking. Just keep walking. David kept moving forward. He did not allow this guy's curses, this guy's unjust curses to set him off track and to move him in a different direction than what he was planning on going. And so the Bible says that he just kept walking. He just kept walking. And guess what happened? The guy who was criticizing him, he's not mentioned anymore. He's out of the picture. He's gone. Why? Because David didn't allow the critics to get inside of his head. And that's my encouragement to you. See, the criticism, the, the F-bombs that people drop, the, the, the curse that people say about you, it's for, not for the purpose of just you know uh, derailing your position. They ultimately can't take you out of the position that, that you're in. It's to get you in your head so that you lose the power and authority that God has given you in the position that you're in. And that's why it's so important what the Bible says that above all else, meaning higher than anything else, this is above all else, guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life. Criticism is meant to cut off the wellspring of life. It's cut to cut off your passion, to cut off your fuel, to cut off your energy, to cut off your strength. Critics are out to cut that off. 
And if you just keep walking and don't give in to the criticism, you'll realize that the criticism will die out because that negativity cannot last. It can only go on for so long. But when you give to it and when you feed it, you get you feed it and anything you feed has the po potential to grow. Anything you starve will die. <laughs> That's good. Anything you feed has the potential to grow and anything you starve will die. How do you handle your critics? How do you handle the people who curse you? Three words, just keep walking. That's my encouragement to you today. Just keep walking. Go forward in the strength of the Lord and wherever you're at, whatever position God has given you, the critics are not worth your time. Bless them, trust God with them, and just keep walking. God bless you. Have a great Friday.